Hello and welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Asmita from Informatica GCS and in this video we will talk about using object queries from repository manager. The agenda of this video is to see what is a query, how to create object query, how to write nested query and defining deployment group based on the query. We will see a demo on all this. What is a query? Query is basically a repository object. We can use query to query the repository objects using the conditions and with that we will be able to fetch the results which are based on the conditions we provide. We can see the parent object, child objects which is nothing but the dependent objects of a particular object, valid and invalid objects, deleted objects and also we can create dynamic deployment group and do other activities using the query. Now we will go ahead and see how to create object query and then we will create a nested query and then we will define deployment group based on the query. So let's proceed to the demo. For the demo I have logged into my repository manager and I'll go to my tools and we can see the option queries. So once you click, click on that option, you will be able to see the list of the queries already being created. In case if you want to create a new query, you'll have to select the new option. So in this query editor, you will see the query name. You can provide the query name as per your choice. I'm providing query underscore one. And it will be having two parts basically. One is the parameter and then the condition. So it is just like a select query with the where clause. So in the parameter, you will see multiple parameters here. You can select any one of them depending upon the use case. Then you will have operators where you can select as one of start with and all this depending upon the use case. And then you need to select the values depending upon the parameters whichever you have selected. So let's see what are the parameters here. So basically it has like checked in time, checkout time, comments, folders, last time saved, label, all these details are there. So suppose if you want to just select a particular folder which is equal to say any of the folder in our repository. So I'm just selecting one folder underscore one. So once I execute this query you will be able to see the list of all the objects which are inside this particular folder. So basically here uh, we are just firing a select query where the folder name or folder value is equal to folder underscore one. So now what you can do is you can also add more parameters to this. Say I want to select only the particular mappings which are there in this particular folder. So I'll just add one more particular parameter here and then I can just select uh, say object type which means my object type should be equal to any one of this. So I just want to see the mappings in this particular folder. So I'm just selecting mapping. So let me just execute this. So now you will be able to see all the mappings which are under this particular folder. So we can see I have this many mappings in my folder underscore one. So in the similar way you can add multiple parameters and provide the condition and execute that particular queries. So once the query is created you will have an option to save this query. So once I save this query you will start seeing this query and inside our uh, query browser. So you can just close it and anytime whenever you want to execute this query you can again go and just double click on it and again run the query. You will get the same result or if there is any update you will see the latest result on that basis. Okay so now if there is a condition where you want to see the mappings as well as the workflows so what to do? So we will think, okay, fine. We will just go ahead and add one more object here. 
and we can select the parameter as object again object type and we can just say equal to and we can go and select our workflow uh, so but if you see it then this condition says like where the folder is one and the object type is workflow as well as the object type is mapping so there will be no object in our work in our map in our folder where the object type will be both mapping as well as the workflow so if we just execute this particular query we will not see any of the objects being displayed here so how to do that so let's see how we can achieve that so basically first of all i'll just delete this particular object so uh, there are two ways to achieve it so first we can what we can do is we can just select object is one off and then in the, in the, the op, third option we can select mapping and we can select workflow so in this way if we just execute the query you will be able to see all the mappings as well as all the workflows here okay so I'll just close this. So now I'll show you how to create a nested query. I'll just close this. Yes, I'll just save it and I'll create a new query. So let me create a new query. Okay, I'll name it as query underscore two. And now what I'll do is I'll add an or condition. So basically the same requirement we'll be achieving using the different method here so inside this and we'll add two parameters so the first parameter will be folder where we'll provide equal to folder one and the second par parameter is say object type is equal to say so selected mapping now again we'll add one more condition here and in this one we'll be adding two parameters again okay this one i'll just delete it okay here i'll add one more so basically first one we'll again select folder which is equal to folder one and the object type is equal to workflow so if i execute this query we can again we'll be able to see all the workflows and all the mappings which are there in this particular workflow so this is the way how we create the nested query i have shown you one of the simple example here you can use this for multiple use cases as well okay so we can just save this query okay now we will see how to do a dynamic deployment using this query so i'll just go to my deployment group i'll create a new and then i'll click click on dynamic so static deployment we'll just select the objects which have has to be deployed manually so in the dynamic we can just select the query which we have built so say I'm just selecting this particular query underscore two, which we have just built. So here you can see this query has been added. So while we will do the deployment, it will use this particular query and find out the objects what are there and the, uh, by this particular, which are coming by this particular query and deploy those objects using this deployment group. I'll just say, say okay. So you can see now that this deployment group has been created and you can use the same to deploy dynamically using the query. So once the deployment would be successful, you will be able to see the uh, deployment group with all the objects which were the result of the query which we fired. So here you can see all the mappings as well as the, all the workflows which were the result of our query has been deployed here. With this, we finish our demo session.
you can refer to our knowledge base articles in case if you face any issue while doing the same you can also refer, refer to our power center help guide the link of for the same is given we would love to hear from you you can write to us on support videos at the rate informatica.com or tweet us on infosupport thank you so much for your time